Shalom and welcome to another episode of the Gospel Bite. I am your brother Lawrence. In this channel, we seek to share and encourage each other in the Word of God as we walk the Christian journey. And uh, we are privileged today to have our dearly beloved brother, Pastor Richard, all the way from Ghana, Winneba, who is here to bless us with the Word of God. Pastor Richard has featured on this program and uh, his sharing has been a blessing unto us and he's here today to uh, bless us uh, with words of encouragement to strengthen us in our Christian journey. And so without much ado, I will just offer a word of prayer and invite my brother to uh, take over and bless us. Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for another opportunity to be gathered at your table where the bread of life is going to be break, broken unto us. Father, we commit ourselves, our audience, our members into your hands. We pray, O oh Lord, that you anoint us, you, are, you, you prepare our hearts to receive the engrafted word which is able to save our souls. I pray, committing my dear brother, brother Richard into your hands, Father, may you anoint him to speak your oracles. Put a word in his mouth to speak unto us today. Father, for we are ready and yearning for more of you. Pray for my audience once again, Lord. Let this sharing be a blessing unto him. Begin with us, go with us, and end with us. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So, Amen. Pastor Richard... You are welcome to the Gospel Bite. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. It's a great privilege to feature once again on the Gospel Bite. Beloved, time is coming to a close. Everything is coming to a climax. Evil is coming to a climax and good is also coming to a climax. And the Bible says, the enemy goeth about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He goes about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. That is First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. The Bible made us to know that we should redeem the time because the days are evil. Ephesians chapter 5, verse, verse 16. Redeeming the time because the days are evil evil. If the Bible describes the day in which we are living as evil, and the Bible admonishes us to redeem the time, beloved, we need to redeem the time. How we use our time, what we use our time for, we all must pay attention to it not forgetting that there is a master that we serve. He demands much of our attention. It is time for us to bury ourselves in the word of God. Seeking God in his word, knowing him better because the days are evil. We are coming to a climax of everything and we shall come across discouraging circumstances. Things are just not going to be easy. In the economic front, the social front, the religious front, it's all going to be battle. And if you are not strong in the Lord, you'll be tempted to give up. 
Bible says we should be strong in the Lord. Ephesians chapter 6, reading from verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And verse 11 says, Put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor, not part and um, part and um, partly armor. No, the whole armor. Not some armor, no, the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, the tricks of the devil, the schemes of the devil. You must know that the devil has got his tricks, has got his schemes. And he will play on your ignorance. So you must bury yourself in the Lord Strengthen your relationship with God by meditating and praying. Constantly build upon the relationship. Make it stronger. It is time for us to hear directly from God. This is not time for us to be joking. It is time for us to be more serious than ever. Because the devil has come out with different schemes. He has come out with tricks. He can imitate. He is a religious being. He can easily imitate. The Bible says he comes as an angel of light. In other words, he is not light, but he imitates to be light. But if you are ignorant of the word of God, you are tempted to accept him because he looks like real. Meanwhile, he is counterfeit. Verse 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You, as an individual, you are fighting four different spiritual entities. Four different spiritual entities principalities, powers, rulers of this world, darkness, or cosmic powers of darkness, spiritual forces of evil, represented in every circle, in government, regional level, the local level, at homes, in families, the devil plays his representatives at all levels. And you need to be alert and awake. If not, you give him the upper hand and he will do what he's not supposed to do. We are engaged in the spiritual warfare. Christianity is not a fun fair, but it is warfare. You finish one battle, another one is waiting for you. If you are a coward, you cannot be a Christian. You need to build up yourself in the word of God in order to withstand the schemes and the attacks of the enemy. 
Satan has devices that he fights with. What are some of them? What are some of these devices? Beloved, just as God has forgiven us, God is expecting us also to forgive all those who offend us. All those who step on us deliberately or unknowingly. In fact, offenses shall come. We need not give space for the enemy to find fault with us. If we forgive others, we reinforce the work that Christ has done for us by forgiving us our sins. Satan will capitalize on your unforgiveness and be a hindrance to your prayer. In fact, vengeance does not lie with human beings. Vengeance lies with God. Offenses may come, but our duty is to forgive. Give the offender the second chance and give him the benefit of the doubt. It's not as easy as I'm saying it. But with God, all things are possible. If only we place that offender on our prayer list and we are praying with him for him, we are bound to forget his errors. We are bound to forget his offense and we are bound to love him. If offenses exist and there is no forgiveness, we give energy, we give impetus, we give the chance for the enemy to hinder our growth and to hinder our victory as spiritual beings. So the number one thing that we must guard against is unforgiveness. Learn to forgive. Some offenses are difficult to forget. But is there anything difficult unto the Lord that we cannot become what God wants us to become? God forgets our offenses, our sins, and he forgives us. We are also in the same position to forgive and to forget. So take note, number one obstacle that the enemy will place on your way is unforgiveness. But I believe the Holy Spirit will help us to forgive all offenses that we can walk with God. Number two, another strategy the enemy uses is this. Satan easily manipulates people from their place of blessing and send them to the wilderness. Remember, we are social beings and God will not bless you in a vacuum. God will use somebody to bless you. God will bring his own messenger on your way to bless you. We all need to climb on the shoulder of somebody. God will bring that somebody to climb on his shoulder. But very often, we'll find offense with these people. The person might not be at the same level of faith as you are. And sometimes when they come into our circles, the enemy opens our eyes to see faults with them, and then we start criticizing we start seeing their body part. It may be a church. Offenses are common at church. And offenses come very often from the brethren, the very brethren that we fellowship with. It is part of the temptation. Once you find fault with that group, you take your mind off them. You isolate yourself. You give 
tools for the enemy to attack you and to destroy you. There is no society or no family or no gathering of human beings without offense. And there is no perfect gathering of human beings where you will not see any offense. Every gathering of human beings, the brethren, you see offense. And the devil would like to point your eyes unto such offenses, such that he will drive you away from that company, drive you into isolation, drive you into the wilderness where there is no water. He may even make you to look as if you are better off and greater and more saintly than the rest. Beloved, Jesus did not come for the righteous. He came for the unrighteous to make them righteous. Another strategy that the enemy uses is this. He places evil identity mark, spiritual identity mark on people, preventing good things to come to them. Just as God also placed a seal on the believer, Satan also tries to counterfeit. If God places a good seal, a seal of the Holy Spirit on you, Satan will also try to introduce a seal of evil into your life. He will place hindrances, limitations on your way. Place evil mark. Sometimes people hate you for nothing. Not because of your color. You ask them the reason why they can't tell, but deep down with them, they don't, they, they don't like you. Such people, you need to pray for them. They are agents of the enemy. Satan is using to find fault with you. For your adversary, the, the enemy, sick. Beloved, every, I will share some of the skills or some of the strategies, the tactics that we need to employ in our fight if we are to win in this fight. Number one, beloved, identify yourself with the word of God. Be a doer of the word. Who is he that will harm you if you are a doer of that which is good? Who is he that will harm you if you are a doer of the word of God? Righteousness, doing the word of God is like a thunder. It blows away every arrow of the enemy. It blows away every imagination against you. Evil imagination against you. Identify yourself with the word. Be a doer of the word. Be determined to memorize the word of God. Because that is our weapon. When the enemy came to Jesus, Jesus said, it is written, it is written, it is written. Learn to quote the scripture back unto the enemy. When you find yourself in that battlefront, the only thing that can, you can use to conquer is what? It is written, it is written, it is written. Memorize the scriptures. Identify yourself with the scriptures. When you identify yourself with the scriptures, as you say it aloud, as you confess it, the power that is in the word is transferred to you. You exercise that power. And when it is transferred to you, the next thing that you see is what? Explosion. Manifestation. Massive manifestation. 
So one strategy to overcome the enemy and to win this spiritual battle is what? Identification. Identify yourself with the word of God. Remain in the word. Number two. Tactically position yourself. Do you know that we are bilocational? The Bible says we are bilocational. We can be on earth and be in heaven at the same time. Second uh, uh, chapter of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 to 6. But God was rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved, and has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. There is a seat made for you before God. When you were born again, that seat is yours. Nobody can sit on it. It's in the heavenly realm. Make sure you maintain that seat. And you sit on that seat. You remain on that seat. But when you are in the company of God, no evil can defeat you. Nothing can defeat you. Because you are in safe company. We are bilocational. Do not make this earth your home. You are the stranger on earth. Those strangers on earth, at the same time, the Bible says what? You can be in heaven. Remain in that heavenly realm where the seat is reserved for you. Number three, tactical redirection. Not all men who question you or who attack you you should be ready to defend. Not all questions you should be ready to answer. Sometimes silence is a great weapon. When you engage in it, you put your enemy into fear. Silence is a great weapon. Not every question you need to force yourself to answer. Not every battle you need to engage yourself in. No. Silence is a weapon. Isaac employed it. And the enemy came back to beg him. He dug the well. The enemy closed the well. Isaac never fought with them. He died another one. They closed it. Isaac left. He died the third one. The enemy came to me. We have seen the power of God in your life. The blessing that you carry. We have come to make peace with you. Because you provoke you several times. But you seem not to bother. Silence is a weapon. Keep your eyes and watch. Move away. Take another direction. They chase you again. Don't worry. Take another direction. They cannot go beyond the third step. The third step, the enemy will bow. Silence is a weapon. Another weapon you engage in this fight is the word. Meditation. Meditate on the word. Learn to meditate. Read the word of God aloud. Memorize it and begin to recite it. It's a great weapon that you use to overcome the enemy. There are instances that enemy will let you get discouraged. There are instances that what? The enemy will let you get down to the level that you, you begin to pity yourself. Remember, God did not put you in a pit. 
God has redeemed you and placed you on Mount Zion. Never pity yourself. Engage the word of God. Encourage yourself in the word of God. Study the Bible. Study the characters in the Bible. They are our motivation. But there is nothing new under the sun. Whatever we are going through, they have also gone through it before. Another weapon you have to engage is worship and praises. How often do you sing praises aloud to God? How often do you sing and praise God? How often do you remember the verses of the songs that you sing? How often do you praise God? Praise and worship is a tool that you can use to defeat the enemy. Your, another, another strategy is your testimony. The Bible says, for we overcome him with the blood and with our testimonies. What is your testimony? Testimony that I am saved. Testimony that I'm a child of God. Your testimony for overcoming with the words of our testimony. Remember, life and death belongs to the power of your tongue. Your confession, what you say, goes to affect your life. Your confession will make your body to obey. Whatever you confess, your body, that is what your body is going to obey. So your confessions, no matter how you are pushed to the wall, learn to confess the word of God. Finally, how often do you participate in a communion service? The communion service, the Last Supper, how often do you participate? To some believers, it doesn't matter. It carries a spiritual weight. The communion service carries spiritual weight. Do you eat with the rest of the saints at the Lord's table? It is a simple ceremony, but it carries great spiritual significance. Spiritual warfare and prayer. Beloved, nothing can go beyond your prayer. Where your prayer stops, that is where the enemy too will stop. He cannot go beyond it. It's the greatest weapon God has given us. God answers prayers. He is the God that answers prayers. There is no prayer that you, you pray unto the Lord, God will not answer. God answers every prayer. Except you do not pray. Beloved, to retain your blessings, you need to pray. And to enlarge your coast, you need to pray. The little blessings that you have, the enemy would like to take it away from you. But you must pray to retain it. And as you retain it, we are waiting for more blessings to come. But if you do not pray, the enemy will take the little that you have away and he will hinder you from receiving more. Yes. When we read 2 Corinthians chapter 10, the Bible says, verse 3, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not Hannah, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that assaulted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. What is witchcraft? You may not be a witch. But witches are always having imaginations, evil imaginations. It's a craft. Be very careful never 
to imagine evil. Somebody is imagining evil against you. But we have a weapon. A weapon of our warfare is what? Prayer. Prayer. It can cast down every evil imagination and anything that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Prayer can bring it down. The word of God can bring it down. Amen. Remaining and practicing the word of God destroys and dismantles every weapon and every arrow the enemy carries against you. Verse 5, casting our imaginations and every height that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Just as somebody is imagining evil against you, the enemy too will use, bring evil thoughts into your mind, but the word of God is able to neutralize and bring any thought contrary to the word of God to the obedience of Christ. Verse he says, and having in readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Learn to obey the word of God. It's a weapon that you use against the enemy. When your obedience is fulfilled, anything that is against you will not work. When your obedience of what the word of God is fulfilled, anything, any disobedience of the enemy against you cannot work. Learn to obey God. It's a deliberate attempt. The word of God says it. It's a deliberate attempt that you have to do. Don't wait for anybody to push you. But once the word of God says it, beloved, run, run, run. Begin to do it. Don't let anybody push you. Don't look at somebody before you do it. It is between you and God. Your obedience is a weapon. It neutralizes every plan of the enemy against you. Yes, everything is coming to a climax. Prayer is our weapon. Praises is our weapon. The word of God is our weapon. No matter how tough the battle is, no matter how the odds are against us, we are forever victorious. And we shall forever be victorious. Remain with God. Throw the line of God. Align yourself with the word of God. Make sure you fill yourself with the word of God. Make sure you are always grateful to whatever the Lord has blessed you with. Whether that is your expectation or not, remain grateful. Remain thankful unto the Lord. And he that has called you will continue and complete it. For you are a divine project. You are a, a divine project in the hands of God. There is no project that God has started and God has abandoned it. And everything that God has spoken about you, God is bound to do it. God bless you so much. God bless you abundantly. I am praying for you. And I know that the Lord that has brought us this far will carry us and bring us to the end. For there is no project that he has started and he, God, has abandoned it. God bless you and bless you abundantly. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. God bless you richly, yeah. Pastor yeah. Richard. We are so grateful for coming on the Gospel by to bless us tonight on the spiritual warfare and prayer. Pray. Spiritual warfare and prayer. We thank the Lord that you made us to understand that uh, though we have four dimensions of the spiritual realm, we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who strengthens Amen. us. Hallelujah. Amen. You also Amen. made us to understand that Christianity is a warfare and not a fanfare. Yeah. It just, just dropped into my heart and I, I was so much overjoyed when I heard that. It's a warfare. It's not a fanfare. As people are jumping about claiming uh, miracles 
prosperity, running after one uh, prophet after the other. It is not like that. It is a warfare. After one battle is won, another one is lying uh, in front of us to you know, go and defeat. He also made us to understand that vengeance lies with God. You know, we Christians, we always want to fight the battle ourselves. But no, uh, the man of God made us to understand that vengeance belongs unto God. And God is going to recompense. When we leave everything to God, God will fight for us. And uh, uh, our brother also made us to understand that some of the things that may us not to win our spiritual battles are unforgiving spirits. We don't forgive each other. But if we are able to forgive and forget, God will be in a position to win all our battles. Amen. Amen. And the, our brother also said, uh, Satan manipulates our blessings to the wilderness. Amen. The meaning is that you don't know where your blessings will come from. Somebody that you, you tend not to agree with, the blessings must come from that person to bless you. Sure. So you must be very careful to forfeit, to be able to forfeit your blessing if you, are, you don't manipulate that blessing to the wilderness. Hallelujah. Amen. And our brother also said that, you know, Christian groups, uh, little, little groups, they are always bound to be uh, offenses. But woe unto that person through which that offense comes. We don't, we don't have to allow offenses to come our way. Oh, I just like that. And our brother also made us to understand that the devil puts marks on people. You know, just as uh, our brother indicated, God marks us with the Holy Ghost. Our seal is the mark of the Holy Ghost. But the devil also marks people for destructions. And we need to identify that to be able to what? Fight and win our battles. And our brother went on to uh, elaborate some few points to what uh, tools that we can use to defeat the enemy, to win the battle, to win the spiritual battles. And one of, one of those uh, tools is that we must always identify ourselves with the word of God. We should be able to memorize the word and meditate upon the word. Hallelujah. As the Bible said, let this book of the Lord never depart from you. Thou shalt meditate upon it day and night. If we meditate, if we memorize Jesus Christ, when he walked here on earth, when the devil came to him, he quoted the word of God back to him and he defeated the devil. Our brother also said, uh, tactically, we are in two dimensions. We are seated yeah. in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And if we, are, yeah. we realize the fact that we are in two dimensions, then the battle is even uh, halfway won. Because whatever yeah. we command here in the physical is already bound in that dimension. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And our brother also said, one of the weapons, and I like that. I'm so blessed about that. That we need to use is always to be very uh, tactical. That is, you don't need to speak all the time. Silence is golden. Silence defeats the enemy. You know, it's not every time. We should watch our word. We should watch our mouth, our speeches. It's, it's better to keep quiet than to speak. Thereby, God is fighting for you. Another, also, another tool also is praise and worship and testimonies. Hallelujah. We defeat the Amen. devil by the word of our mouth and by the word of our testimonies. Praise the Lord. So, Amen. I mean... Saying our testimony, you know, telling our testimonies to uh, brothers 
brothers and sisters that are so dear and near us, we are always defeating the devil. And one of the things that our brother also pinpoint is that communion service. People underrate it. It carries spiritual weight. As our brother said, we should not forsake, you know, partaking of the Lord's table, breaking of the bread and partaking of the wine is very, very necessary to defeat the devil. And finally, our brother said, prayer is our number one weapon. I don't see any Christian who will engage in a spiritual warfare without praying. If you don't pray, you become weak. If you pray, you win your battles. Oh, my audience, we have been so blessed tonight. Brother Richard, we are so grateful for coming on the Gospel Bite. We appreciate you. And we, my audience attracts. You have been blessed tonight with prayer, spiritual warfare, and prayer. And go back, reflect upon these points, and God is going to win. You are going to win your battles and defeat the enemy all the time. So this is where we've come to yet another end of end of uh, this episode. This program comes to you every week. And whenever the need arises, may you come back, share your comments, your thoughts, and we are more than willing to get back to you. And so without much ado, I will just ask my brother, Pastor Richard, to close us in a short word of prayer. Father, we thank you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Your word has gone forth, Lord. Utter it and let it bring forth fruit to your glory and to your honor. Every plan of the enemy against any brother, against any sister, during this week and during this time of the end of the year, in the name of Jesus, we counsel them. We bring it, O Lord, to nothing. Father, let your presence go with us. Let your anointing overshadow us. For you are the God that directs the footsteps of the righteous. We pray, Lord, direct our footsteps. Direct our footsteps, Lord. Perfect everything concerning us. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming, tuning in to the Gospel Bite. And we trust you'll be back another time where we bring more episodes to you. Stay blessed. And until we meet you again, we say shalom, 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 shalom.